Everybody's Tyler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Singer event, checking in with 321C Celestial. Triple crown already and three skills as well, too. So phenomenal performance so far. Looking really good here at the Singer event as well, too. We're going to be diving a lot to talk about on this robot. Huge lift we'll be talking about. Uh, some very unique strategy they've been doing with their wings. So I really want you to pay attention to that. They had a really big match yesterday with that as well, too. Uh, but so much to cover on this robot. Uh, bearings and so much more. Let's learn more about Celestial. Come up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Hunter, let's start off with this massive lift that you have here. Talk to me about the composition of it. How tall is it? And uh, when did you make this modification to your robot too? So the most important thing on this robot and the biggest thing is our double reverse four bar lift. It's 36 inches tall at the match load tray. We shoot the tri balls at about 133 RPM. The lift is powered by these two two inch pistons that have just enough power to push the lift up with these rubber bands on the side and on the top. It enables the lift to lift with a very low air, and uh, it keeps the lift strong enough uh, to match low tri balls. We also have this uh, felt on the front that prevents tri balls from getting stuck underneath. When the lift goes down, the felt just naturally uh, folds in place. How quickly are you going through uh, your match loads during a match, typically? The match loads can be done in about 11 seconds, is right. what we calculated. And do you find from a strategy wise, you know, the more I've seen in the meta of this game, uh, match load is obviously important for skills, but we're starting to see a little bit of that shift uh, to where it's more about individual control. Are you still uh, using uh, a lot of match loads in your strategy here at this event? Here at this event, we found that it's very difficult to match load uh, when the match load tray is five feet off the ground because of the raised fields. Yeah. So we converted to using the intake and just shoving the tri ball in and driving it directly into the goal. It's a great start so far, but something we really got to talk about, Keegan, is going to be those uh, double wings that you're doing uh, for this. Yesterday, uh, as we're recording this, Q36, you had a really huge match where you implemented uh, a great strategy for that. So talk to me about the wings and then the strategy that you implemented in Q36. Okay. So we have these dual ring wings up here with uh, these back wings being our slanted lower wings. And then the strategy we use, the strategy we used against in Q36 yesterday is uh, blocking the match load bar because our wings are 35 and, a hit, 35 and a half inches long. And it allows us to cover the 35 inch bar, preventing um, any match loads from our uh, opponents being introduced in the game. Um, and then our front wings, um, these are our uh, raised, raised wings. They're meant to extract the tri balls from the match load area in our odds on. And then we also have these ball bearings on them for wall runners when we're grazing up against the wall and skills with them open. Overall, uh, strategy-wise, we're not people aren't going to see us till after playoffs here. But that strategy you talked about doing that wide extension, do you think you're going to be implementing that in playoffs as well too here? Yes, I think we're going to be implementing it. Uh, the strategy we like to use it when we're up in score to just prevent any match loads from getting introduced, and then we usually, if we can do a double hang, we'd love to do a double hang. It's almost its own unique way of uh, tri ball starving that we've seen yep. uh, in these events so far. So that, that's really cool to see on that. Um, from going with that wide of a wing. Uh, at what point did you decide that you wanted to be able to go that wide? Um, was that something you implemented recently, or did you have that throughout the entire season? Um, we had this strategy all the way back in November. Um, we thought of it, and we wanted to increase the size of it, because originally we had about 34-inch wings on our old design, and we wanted to completely cover, uh, so we've increased it to 35 and a half. 
As we wrap on this robot, uh, Landon, uh, one of the things that we mentioned, this will be over the ball bearings on the side here, but I see them in multiple places on your robot. So talk to me about uh, that, the implementation of it. And then uh, I noticed you got some uh, cool custom work on your controller here too, so we'll talk about that. We noticed a lot of other teams having Plexi as sleds, but we also noticed that they were bending and scratching up and a lot of teams would replace it after a tournament. So we found a strategy that used the ball bearings, which are steel and do not bend as easily as Plexi. And we don't need to change those out every tournament. They're also attached to a steel piece to prevent any damage there. We also have ball bearings at every corner of the robot to help us run across the walls. And then on your controller here, uh, talking about some of the 3D printing work you've done for that, and uh, more importantly, like what kind of results are you actually seeing out of using uh, this type of config? We originally used the scuff controller with only four paddles and noticed that that wasn't enough with as many functions as we have on our bot. So we added a sixth, a, pit, a sixth paddle on each side of the original paddles and shrunk the original ones down. And that allows us to press more buttons while still being able to drive. Well, Celestial overall, great performance here so far. We can't wait to see how you do, uh, of course, as we uh, enter in this day two, what could be playoffs as well. So good luck at this competition. Thanks for telling us more about your team and your robot and good luck throughout the rest of the season, guys. We appreciate it. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.